Hello, Reach Your Happy community, and welcome back to another episode of Reach Your Happy with Laura. I am Laura, and today I'm going to talk to you about being a theorist versus a practitioner of life. There are so many self-help books. There's so many resources that can help us theorize about the way we want to go about life. It's incredible what is at our fingertips. And in my experience, there is nothing like actually moving yourself through it. Sometimes we need to be introduced to a concept, a way of being, and, and it really resonates with this. And then you just move on about your life and do your thing and then get reminded of, oh my gosh, that was such a great concept. I loved that theory. Thank you for bringing that up, friend or mentor or what have you. And then, you know, we chew on it for a little while in our mind and then it slips off again. The way to take information and not only resonate with it, but actually have it implemented in your life is to be a practitioner of life, not just a theorist. Because it is really easy to read a book on meditation. It is a lot harder to practice meditation. It's really easy to watch these people exercising and getting up consistently every day, day after day to show up for themselves, show up for their body and be healthy. It's so wonderful to watch. And doing that for one day can feel really good. But the mastery comes in being the practitioner, showing up even when you don't want to for yourself. And I, I do believe you have a lot of good ideas, a lot of theories, but we're missing a, a decent sized chunk, which is putting it into practice. And one of the hard things about putting it into practice is that you generally have to be a beginner at something. You know, um, and that's really hard because the theory sounds so sweet. It's so digestible and easy to marinate in and consume. But the action step and showing up day after day, being disciplined about it is really what's challenging but through the challenge is where you really reap the benefits of being a practitioner versus a theorist so if you're having a hard time with something in your life and you're like i don't know why my routine's just not sticking it's like because you're you're being pressed you're being as the practitioner, you're being pressured into change and it's uncomfortable. But in the book, it didn't seem that uncomfortable. They didn't really, they said some discomfort, some mind stuff coming up, but like not like this. I didn't realize the extent to which my limited self-beliefs are going to rise up and try to halt me in my new endeavor. And... At the beginning of Reach Your Happy, which is almost six years old, in February, February 1st, I knew a lot of things in theory. I had my, my own experiences, but I'd have clients come to me where I hadn't been a practitioner, but rather I was a theorist. And in theory, I could talk about something but actually knowing what it felt like, actually practicing what I was communicating wasn't a part of my experience yet because I was a beginner. I didn't realize how this thing worked. I can have all the theories in the world. I can be well researched and know everything about the mind, the body, the spirit and everything in between. And uh, I can know it. But to actually be it is a totally different ball game. But there is whatever your area is, it could be motherhood, it could be fatherhood, it could be a librarian, it could be anything, anything you can be a theorist about. 
right? I know there's lots of like memes on the internet of like people saying like, oh, before you had kids, you'd say, you're, you're the one who's like, I would never let my kid do that. And now you're the one letting your kid do that, right? In theory, we think we know, but until we're actually in it, in the battle, in the war zone, we don't actually know. And that's true of, you know, childbirth or someone going off to war or having a traumatic incident of some sort. Unless you were there with the particular circumstances, you really don't know what other people went through. And so much of, I remember adolescence, teenage years, 20 years, I wanted to be understood, not realizing that it was borderline impossible for someone to understand me because no one has walked my path in the specific shoes and foot placement that I have taken. And that is a powerful thing, not a detrimental thing. No one is you and that is your power. I'm not sure who said that, but it's a beautiful quote. No one is you and that is your power. No one knows how you feel. No one knows how you think. No one knows how the feeling of guilt impacts every other choice you make. That's specific to you. So we have these theories. We want to put them into practice, but there is a great aversion to the practice and becoming the practitioner because that I was going to say probably, but I'm, I'm going to lean more towards most definitely looks like a little bit of stumbling, having to wipe off your knees and stand back up to reassess the situation and begin again. People have this a lot with weight loss. It is like a roller coaster. And the key to mastering anything is to keep on going. That doesn't mean don't break, but it does mean don't give up. Keep going, keep showing up. Not even when it's hard, especially when it's hard, do not press the snooze button. Get your sneakers on, have your sneakers next to your bed, have your outfit laid out. Whatever you got to do to jumpstart the discipline first thing. Whatever it is that you're trying to commit to, creating an environment that is supportive of that is huge. Out in the world, it's not always going to be the most fluffiest, conducive environment for whatever change you're trying to make. But if you practice it in isolated situations like waking up consistently every morning and getting your walk in or getting your meditation in or meal prepping or staying consistent on reading, whatever it is your thing is, there's gonna be days where it's really easy, other days it's going to be really hard, and I can only say, unless you've done it, I can only say that what is on the other side of mental suffering is absolute gold. But like every beautiful fairy tale, there is something you have to face. There is the monster that's before the gold, right? And really the monster I'm referring to is the monster which can be our own mind, our own doubt, our own disbelief that we're capable or worthy of doing that thing that we've set out to do. And mother nature is just remarkable, you know? She's wired us in such a way that we like to, we like predictability when absolutely nothing is certain. We like patterns because it's predictable when, yes, there are patterns and we can fall into them, but that stunts our growth. That keeps us reliving its Groundhog Day, right? It, it's same, it's a different day on the calendar, but same thing you're going through. You're not really growing. So there's an aversion to change. There's a deep beauty and there's like comfort is so enticing. Why? Mother nature wants us to stick around. And if you push the edge of that comfort zone too far, you're maybe confronted with some danger and the mind's like, stay safe, 
right? The brain really, it's not the mind, it's the brain, which is connected to the nervous system is saying, stay safe. So we're working with all types of real tricky systems that could easily trip you up. And so what needs to come into play for you to make a change, to be a practitioner of life instead of a theorist? There's one word, and, and maybe there's more words. I love if you have some word that you're like, oh, there's this too, Laura, please put it in the comments below. But the one word I'm thinking of, the one word that's got me through times where I lacked motivation and wasn't inspired, is discipline. Discipline. You know? There's, I believe it's uh, Jocko Willink. He was a Navy SEAL. Um, he says discipline equals freedom. The discipline to do it today, you know, perhaps you're trying to eat healthier at lunchtime at work. The discipline of making your sandwich and your salad and your snacks the night before equals the freedom of the next day that allows you to get your full workout on and, and, and have a shower and make breakfast and, and be ready and prepared and, and cared for for that day ahead of you. But without discipline, we're just betting on motivation. We're betting that I'll feel the inspiration. I'll want to do it. When I hear that alarm go off, I'm going to want to get up. We're betting that. And uh, that's a risky bet. <laughs> I don't, I don't, well, I play cards, but I, I don't gamble. But I'm, I'm guessing betting on your desire to do it is not a smart bet to make. So, Every day you're going to feel a little different, but discipline doesn't care what you feel like. Discipline is overriding the comfort of your own bed. It's overriding any belief of like, I'm not going to get there anyway. I'm never going to be a Reiki master anyway. I'm never going to make money doing this anyway. I'm never going to see the results I want anyway. It's overriding that discipline says, F that excuse, we're riding over that little speed bump that's attempting to get in our way, and, and we're just gonna do a little something. You know, if you're exhausted, you wake up with a headache. It's not about doing it to perfection every day, whatever that task is, whatever that habit is you're trying to work on to help enhance your life. Ultimately, that's what it's for, and it's good for you, but our mind can come up with all these very crafty scenarios that keep us still that keep us in the same place that we've been. But discipline won't allow that. Discipline is saying something is better than nothing. Going for a little walk around my house is better than no walk. I've made a commitment to myself that I care for my physical body, my mental and my spiritual self before I make content, before I go into session with somebody or many people. It's me first and then. I've made that promise to myself. And some days, like when it's the time of the month for me, I don't want to do that. But discipline has to override my wants and my desires. Do I have to do a marathon on that time of the month? No. Is movement extremely beneficial and helps ground me and helps clear my mind and help me feel connected? Yes. So I'm not always going to want to do the thing as a practitioner, but when you're keeping stuff in the theory realm, it's just almost, almost this like cloud that isn't downloaded. Whereas the practitioner, right? These pieces get integrated into you. So how do you make a change? How do you start on the path you don't allow yourself to stay as the theorist. You put yourself through it. And the most benefit I found with my clients and what I started to realize was that they're going through something that I went through, mastered, integrated, practiced 
over the past maybe months or even weeks, sometimes days. That's like deeply shifted me and now I'm in a space to help someone else through it. I really trust the energy of my business that the people that come to me are seeking something that I have maybe not completely mastered. I don't think there's an end to mastery, but I have mastered to some degree, to some level. And my work is to be at that level, help assist them to get maybe on it or close to it. And then I continue to evolve and they can, and sometimes it's like this, they evolve past me and I'm like, wow, look at you go. Thank you for showing me that. So it's this beautiful exchange, but until I realize it's not about the theory, it's about putting it into practice. And I talked about being a caregiver. I talked about that, but was I doing it for myself? No, but until I put into practice me first, my mind first, my body first, my breakfast first, before I come serve you, I was just a theorist. And when I started practicing, it didn't change my rhetoric. It changed my compassion for being the theorist. It changed my understanding of someone's predicament. That is the greatest gift that I believe I can offer anyone is to the best of my ability, zooming out and trying to see from their perspective as best I could while also having my interpretation of it. Because like I said, I can only understand you to a certain degree, but I would say my energy work somehow removes the filter between human to human and allows me to connect deeply with your soul. So I, I am really fortunate for that. And every day I continue to be even more appreciative of those gifts because I understand the value that is seeing someone. So that is all I have for you today. Be a practitioner of your art, of your craft, of what you say, and watch how your world change. And if I can be of any assistance to you, I'll keep sharing my message. I'll keep sharing how I'm showing up, being disciplined, even when I don't want to, even when I've got an ice bath looking me straight in the face and it's freezing cold and I don't have to do that. I have a nice warm home, but I do it anyway. I am here as, as a mirror. I can do it, you can do it too. Enjoy the practice. It's not about perfection. It's just about showing up to the best of your ability and knowing that's more than enough. That's more than just having these thoughts in the cloud of theory and instead integrating it to the best of your ability and don't be afraid to fall flat on your face. There's great learning in that. And I know from experience, Thank you so much. I love you. Take good care. Until next time, be good. Be well.